This particular session is dedicated to Kundalini awakening and the vision of tantric deities. This topic leads us to even much, much more deeper level of the esoteric you know, aspect of the Tantra and Kundalini. In normal Kundalini Yoga, there is a normal Kundalini experience. What does it mean? Normally, people talk about Kundalini experience in terms of something very unique happened. <gasps> You know, something lightning, lightning type of things happened. Or a great surge of a particular type of sensory experience. Some kind of elation. Some kind of you know, eye-striking kind of experience. You know, something beyond ordinary. That's what people talk about. Kundalini awakening type of experience within the exclusive field of quote Kundalini yoga. And that's that's true, that's okay, that's all right. Because in normal field of Kundalini yoga, you are dealing with body. You are dealing with nervous system. And you are you are using the bodily forces to awaken just one on a deeper little, just relatively one more little deeper level of Shakti within you that lies just below your body. And what is that Shakti? Your own sensory Shakti. Sensory powers. By using the forces of Hatha Yoga, Bandha, Mudra, Pranayama, too much. You just really stir the forces of your body. Keep on going. Go more, 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 more. Of course, at some point, <sighs> you will collapse. At that state, there is a law. Law is that when you go on one side too much, automatically there is a force that tries to pull you back in reverse order. Always it's it's simple law. It's called law of action and reaction. You push the ground backward with your foot, with your feet, automatically the amount of energy you, you exert in pushing the ground backward, exactly same amount of energy the earth, the ground exerts on you in order to push forward. You push the earth, the ground backward, exactly same amount of energy is exerted in, to push you forward. That's called law of action and reaction. When you go on, mm, 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 no, keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. After a certain point, that anti-exertion law takes place. That gives you a sense of an illusion of experience of quietude. That is Kundalini experience. Go on pounding on your second chakra, third chakra, boom, 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 for, with pranayama. Of course, some kind of energy will be that, you know, under that great, you know, stress, compression. <laughs> and once you come to a culmination point, you relax. Automatically, body will throw you in a state of relaxation. That's what sleep is all about. But if you have been, let's say, in a car, in a train, all day long, couple of days, if when you are a couple of days in, in one of those Indian trains, Chinese trains, which are not very sophisticated, finally you come to your house and fall in the bed, it's still your body is you know, on the same mode. On one hand, you are tired and fatigued, and therefore, there comes the phenomena of sleep, forcing you to rest. And in that restful situation, there is a dream world, you know, you are thrown into. Same thing here. This is called a crude way of awakening Kundalini, whose effect does not bring any qualitative transformation in you. 
It is an experience that lasts with you for a while, but it does not add in to your wisdom. Because it is not truly awakening of Kundalini Shakti. It is called reaction to what you did in an excessive manner. Whereas a tantric way of awakening Kundalini is totally different. There is the power of breath, the power of your intention, the power of mantra, power of yantra, power of mandala, power of great lineage. Everything combined together awakens your Shakti at physical level and reinvest that Shakti to go much deeper and further reinvest that Shakti at much, much, much deeper level. So this way you keep reinvesting the Shakti that awakens at this moment, you reinvest it at next moment at much more uh, deeper level for much more higher yield. So this way your inward journey continues. Meanwhile, there is an element of love, devotion. There is an element of right kind of right understanding of your body, of your breath, of your mind. There is a kind of tantric understanding of your body that is body is a living shrine. In this body, there are beautiful, beautiful altars. It, there is a tantric understanding that which particular altar you choose to offer your own love and respect to your own inner divinity. Therefore, based on that, there is a manifestation of your own inner divinity, the eternal divinity, the divinity that is with you, that is you, divinity that is uh, personal, divinity that is impersonal, divinity that which is individual, and divinity that is cosmic. Divinity where all the contradictions and conflicts completely dissolve. That divinity is in you. And you chose a particular altar to experience that divinity that shows you that your body, your breath, your mind, your personal world, your world made of material, your material world and spiritual world are not separate from each other. That kind of divinity manifests at a particular altar in your own this wonderful shrine called human body. And that divinity manifests exactly in the shape and the size of your mental, intellectual, mental and intellectual comprehension. And that is called vision of a deity. Somebody sees that God and goddess and deity as a loving mother holding her child who appears somewhere in the vision of a, a, of a Christian saint. And the Christian saint, after having that vision, picks up his brush and tries to give as vivid shape to that inner vision as possible. And thus you go to the main you know, church at the square in Madrid and you will see the mother standing there looking at the baby, looking at Jesus Christ with so much love and compassion. So Christian saint got that vision. Another Christian saint used the same wisdom and knowledge, however, attended slightly different altar in the external world or in the internal world, which we do not know. And the truth is, at that level of realization, the internal altar and external altar, they totally become one. That's when a vision of a deity, vision of the personal God and goddess, which is never personal, that vision appears. So there is another niche in the church in Madrid, if you ever visit, there is another form of the mother looking at her child in a totally different attitude, different eyes, different gestures, different expression. But somewhere, in some other culture, there is 
different kind of goddess entity. Tibet, for example. Then there is another beautiful goddess, half very valiant and half very gentle. And that is called Ardhanari Sura, half Shiva, half Shakti. I have seen it even in Japan. So that is how at different chakras, at different altars in this living shrine called human body, you practice the method of awakening Kundalini Shakti in a tantric manner, tantric style, and therefore you end up having so many different levels of experiences. Those experiences, mystical experiences, esoteric experiences, mind-boggling experiences, are at some point depicted, you know, in in a manner which can which tries to lead us to as uh, tries to lead us to as closely to the original experience as possible, and that is the mystery of tantric gods and goddesses and deities. Thank you very much. <laughs>